Opposition launches new front against President Museveni, Bobby Wines Nupdist. Welcome to the Angels News Podcast, please subscribe to our news channel. Opposition political parties and activist groups in the country have today formed a new pressure group named the People's Front for Transition, PFT, through which they hope to end President Yoweri Museveni's 36-year grip on power. While speaking at the official launch of the party, Dr. Kiza Biesiki, the former president of the Forum for Democratic Change who was selected to lead as the group's national chairman said Uganda is at an unprecedented level of crisis, that necessitates all political forces coming together to end the national resistance movement hold on to power. Besiki said the closure of schools due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the crisis in the health sector will continue to deteriorate if political players in the opposition don't swallow their pride and agree to a common front. Besiki said that the country must now realize that elections will not cause a change in Uganda. He said they have in the past tried them and realized Ugandans can only have a right to vote when they are free from what he called the NRM domination. He added that Ugandans across the country must realize that there is a need to have a grand reset of the country in order to deal with the crises that the country finds itself in. Besiki, a four-time presidential candidate said that in the next three weeks, they are going to consult all stakeholders who have not been consulted before the launch today and agree on how to work together. The Lord Mayor of Kampala Irias Lukwago, who is the National Deputy Chairman of the Front said every change seeking Ugandan must agree to come together and confront the injustices facing the country now. He added that now that they are not facing elections, all political players should feel free to work with each other for the common good of the country. Our coming together is a sign that Ugandans are yearning for change and the rule of law. We are not here to compete with each other but for the common cause. Let the cause be the glue that brings us together. We are not here to connive against anybody except those who have hijacked the sovereignty of the people, we have a cabal in charge of our country," Lukwago said. Patrick Amuriata Boy, the president of FDC said they are optimistic that the new formation will go a long way in achieving what eluded them during the 2021 general elections, adding that the unveiling of the front is the beginning of the hard journey that might see many of them jailed harassed and intimidated. Our comrades in the National Unity Platform thought the dictator could just be run over through an election. The FDC stays committed to every effort in advance of this struggle through a non-election platform to bring change to our country. Today is a very important milestone that will bring us together to take the struggle from one place to another, Amuriat said. Other than the FDC and the People's Government, the new front has membership from the Conservative Party, JIMA, UPC of Peter Walyabiri, DP Bloc, Social Democratic Party, and Uganda Young Democrats among others. Joel Senyanyi, the spokesperson of NUP said they will not be joining the group but they have no problem working together. We don't have to be one thing for us to work together for change. Ugandans across the country know what they want therefore, we shall be working with every entity and formation in achieving the change we want, Senyanyi said. All of us who are oppressed, who are marginalized, who are terrorized, that we come together to free ourselves. All of you who have done that job, please a loud clap for all of you. <laughs> Having said that, it's clear my intention is not say many words today and I'd like to their own set appreciate and thank colleagues who have entrusted the tough responsibility of giving me the coordination of this task that I will I'm here to do so without flinching. The reason today is uh, 
a very important day is because of the level of crisis that our country faces today. The crisis we live in today has not been born in the last few days. It has been a mounting crisis. For all these 59 years that we are going to mark, and I hear some people say celebrate, there is, I'm sorry, there is nothing to celebrate in the 59 years. We can only mark the 59 years of independence. But in the 59 years of independence, a crisis has been building, has been mounting. The independence government, and we are lucky to have the representatives of that government, Uganda People's Congress, talked at independence about the three elements that formed the core of the crisis at independence. And that was ignorance, disease, and poverty. They were the three core elements of a crisis at independence. You don't need an explanation to understand where those three are today. Whether we have gone far in dealing with ignorance, whether we have gone far in dealing with the disease, or whether we have gone far. <laughs> Knowledge equalizes a person from a poor home can be endowed with ability to learn and that endowment comes only from God. And God spreads gifts across all sections of our people. So you find in a very poor home, there are children with a gift of learning and who can acquire a lot of knowledge in a short time. The idea of education is that it then propels them and digs them out of poverty. Education, knowledge is an equalizer. I've been saying that Mr. Museveni would never have dreamt of putting on a suit and being among people if it was not the not even not even independence not even independent Uganda actually colonial Uganda which afforded him education because his home was he was among you know everybody knows he comes from one of the poorest homes but the colonial government the colonial government created an opportunity for him to learn, get knowledge, and the knowledge liberated him, and now his entire clan from poverty. <laughs> Regrettably, under the last 35 years, 36 years of NRM Junta, we now have education apartheid. Africa thought we had seen the last of the apartheid system in South Africa. I'm sorry. The apartheid system is very much alive and well in Uganda. In all spheres, but certainly in the education sphere. A poor person's child can no longer access schools where there is knowledge. They have put for the poor people schools that are free of knowledge, where there is no knowledge. That's where the children of the poor go. UPE, USE, no knowledge. That's where you go to get no knowledge. Graduate of UPE, USE is heading to become a crime preventer, to work in the kitchens of the Arabs. That's where a poor person's child is headed 
because of the education that is available to him. Those who are from a bit well-off families, middle class, maybe who have some jobs in the town, those are taking their children to private schools where there is some literal knowledge being built up there in the private schools. But only literal. Yes, those will continue and go to Makerere. And of course, after Makerere, have no job. Because the knowledge that they accumulate up to Makerere is not liberating knowledge. It's insufficient. Even actually without, without the cancer of corruption. Today, if you do real interviews, you find people from our universities can't pass interviews for the good jobs that are there. Because the knowledge that has been built in these education institutions is very little. Where now knowledge is, is no longer the government schools, is no longer the private schools, it is the international schools. But how many, I don't believe anyone here has any child, there is anybody with a child in an international school. That is for the, the very, very few who hold Uganda captive. They are the